I am Tator, deity of the Spud people. This is why everyone needs to subscribe and give generously to Shock and Mars so we can all have better gear. Too subtle? Let's find out. Okay. Let's trial back from the beginning. Today we are doing taters, all sorts of taters. We got. I'm going to give you the whole list. The Daily Bear. Potato Palooza. That is the name of today's stream. And if anyone wants to play... My subtle too, that's right. <laughs> We're going to start off with scalloped potatoes. We're doing uh, just a single baked potato, because we all understand what a baked potato is. But just in case, just in case somebody out there has not ever baked a potato, or baked it properly. I'm going to demonstrate how to do one. Spoiler alert, it gets baked. Then we're going to do the Hasselback, not Hasselhoff, potatoes. And those are a bit of a straight up bragging rights. It's mostly aesthetic. It is a way to load up your potatoes with extra everything. getting my gadget required, which is a couple of chopsticks. Hopefully I have a second pair. It would make everything more convenient. Oh, look at that. I have two pairs of chopsticks. The reason I need the chopsticks, I'm going to do some arts and crafts with these. And then we're going to wrap everything up with some pan fried potatoes and of course potato pancakes because you can't do potatoes without potato pancakes. How do you boil water? That's a great question. Oh, so deep. I love that cat emote. That's fantastic. It's like Mars, but with, with headphones on. <laughs> yeah, you know, whenever whenever I boil water, I usually start it off with the kettle. Um, just because it, it seems to be a lot faster. And electricity here is dirt cheap. We, we have some of the cheapest hydroelectric, well, cheapest electricity, I think, on the planet. It's something like seven cents per kilowatt hour, whatever that means. Okay. It's freaking cheap, man. Okay. So the recipes are all in a very convenient format on the Daily Bear. It's where I keep everything well, related to cooking. Uh, of course... Grand Puba Shock is going to be uploading this to the uh, YouTube after I clean up the intro and uh, fix the inevitable. Is my mouth synced up to the sound for a change? Because the last couple of streams I had to edit that in post production. We have a small casserole dish. I'm doing everything, uh, I'm doing half batches of everything today, so normally this would be slightly larger. This is about a what, one and a half quart. Normally you'd be using a, like a two or two and a half quart casserole. My live studio audience had a comment. Not in sync. Not in sync. What a surprise. The good news is my normal streaming computer is uh, on the good side of, of systems. So the editing is, is getting a lot quicker. Okay, so I have my generously greased, lubed up. Did somebody make a lube joke already? Shame on everyone. I What I want is about three cups of uh, sliced potatoes. You don't really need to peel your potatoes for scalloped potatoes because if I'm cutting thin sections, that are knife will help. If I'm just cutting up thin sections, if I have a bit of uh, potato skin on the edge, if you're into it, if you like the color, that's fine. If you don't, you can always peel them. Uh, I'm going to be peeling potatoes at some point, but for right now, 
I'm just going to give these a good scrub. My tater lube. Oh, wow. I think that's the end of the stream. I can't top that. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to grab about three cups worth of potatoes. Now, one thing that's handy is a normal soup bowl, a regular soup bowl, is really close to exactly three cups. So this is a heck of a way to eyeball. Yeah, I know, right, Desmodus? It's, uh, we can just roll the end credits right now. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> So after we slice the potatoes, uh, if it fills this bowl, that, that's going to be both three cups, and that's all I need for, for this recipe. Um, and I do need an onion. I will also be reviewing all of these substitutions. Um, was there an awe there? Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys are the best. <laughs> Real Therina, that was that was epic. Well done. I salute you. Well done. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try to focus on this. I'm just gonna rinse these under. I'm gonna give these a, a firm scrubbing, and then I'm going to uh, rinse them under cold water. And then I'll start chopping them up. On my normal stream, I I often say that I, I appreciate it when things don't go according to plan, especially for ingredients or like when I do a bacon weave and the strips of bacon are not perfectly rectangular. I, I do I really do enjoy that because out in the real world, out, out in meat space, as I, as I like to call it, no one else does, uh, your ingredients will fail on you. You will fail your ingredients. Uh, sometimes you won't realize that you're missing something until it's far too late to go to the store. Sometimes your egg will have far too many yolks in it. Sometimes your bacon is a very wonky shape. So it's best, I think it's a great opportunity on the stream when things don't work according to plan so I can show you uh, the easy the easy fixes. Because if everything was done perfectly, if everything, uh, like if all the ingredients worked out, when you go to try it, it's probably not going to happen, you're not going to be quite as lucky, and then, and then what do you do? Like it's easy to follow the key instructions until something goes wrong, and then it's off the window. You defenestrate it. I think that's the word. Out the window. So these potatoes have been given a very thorough scrubbing. I'm just rinsing them under some uh, cold water. Okay, so here we go. We're going to try to not cut ourselves. Okay, I'm going to try to not cut ourselves. And I can't risk touching the camera, so... Ugh, this is going to be so awkward, which is awesome. Okay. Proper cutting technique. Sorry if you've heard this a million times or you're going to hear it a few more before I retire. Claw technique. We're going to use our curved fingers, our curved claw, to be a guide for the flat edge of the knife, the flat side of the knife. 
the business end does not get anywhere near cutting into the little sausages, also known as fingers. We want to keep the red stuff inside. We don't want these to change colors. We definitely don't want Monty Python spurting to happen. These potatoes are fairly tis but a flesh wound, that's right. These potatoes won't roll won't roll around a lot. Oh, I'll say that a few times fast. These are fairly flat on, on the side, so I'm I'm pretty confident that I can just hold this. And slowly it's not a race. There's my oven. Making sure there's nothing in there. It is not a race. That piece was a little thick. I've never heard that before. When you get towards the end and you're sort of juggling to keep things upright, just stop. I can try to trim this up later, but we'll leave it alone for now. Next potato. Always with the claw. You want to chop these fairly thin. Like we're looking at quarter to an eighth of an inch in thickness. And again, when we get towards the end when the potato starts wobbling like this, don't be a hero. I can show you how to, how to clean this up later. Um, actually, I'll show you right now. That's right. Here's the, uh, the way I like to play safe. We have a nice flat side of our potato face down on the cutting board. So far, so good. Trim a piece off, discard it. I now have a flat surface that's not going to wobble. <gasps> Mind blown. So now I can get back to cutting this. And remember, don't do what Donnie Don't does. I think that's how it goes. If I really want to salvage this piece, I can trim off the bottom, so this is going to stay upright. Sometimes you'll see me do this, holding the piece on both sides. That's really dangerous. Don't do that. Again, don't do what Donnie Don't does. And yes, I could trim off this piece right now, but then I'm not going to get the potato skin uh, uniformly around the tater. Potato. The potatoes should also not be wobbling around. So if you, when you get to the point, and it's very likely going to happen, when it gets to the point that you're struggling to keep the potato held in place, do the little kitchen hack. And I can still take this piece and and, uh, and put it in with the scallops. I, I just want the majority of the scalloped potatoes to look like this. Again, if you really want, um, if you don't want any of this brown stuff, just peel them first. I'm doing it like this because uh, because I prefer rustic presentation, which is Vlachos ease for crappy presentation. But today we're just going over the recipe and the basic technique. We're not here to uh, win any awards for presentation. If I really want to fix the presentation, I'm just going to crack open a pack of bacon. Because that's, uh, that's an instant auto win, right? Any questions so far? None. Okay, there we go. Um, that's about three cups. I mean, I could try to jam this potato in here with some potato lube. Someone's going to say it, so I might as well beat them to it. Close enough. That's close enough to three cups. We're not baking a delicate pastry here. We're taking potatoes, cutting them into strips. We're going to have some sort of a sauce in here. Uh, we can be all sorts of horseshoes and hand grenades close for the recipes themselves. I want about a third of a cup of a finely chopped onion. So for an onion, I like to just peel the outer skin off. Get this layer out of the way. Kung Fu Taters. I need a small... My sound is off.
Oh yeah, yeah, that's that sounds off. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry, I, I need to figure out what's happening with the OBS and my syncing because I do not have this problem when I use Streamlabs OBS. Slobs as the as the kids call it these days. Now, with the onion, I do have a video on prepping most vegetables. Uh, I should link them here at some point. At some point. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, if you just peel back the onion, I have a, to the, the root here, I have something that I can hold on to. Someone feel free to make the comment. I think that's OBS, yeah. So from here, if I make a couple of horizontal slits, then I can chop vertically and let the onion, the structure of the onion itself, do all the work for me. So I'm going to hold this in place. If I put more uh, cuts into the onion, the tomato, the potato, the onion, instead of getting diced pieces this big, I can cut this into a, you know, a sixth or an eighth of this size. But th this is good enough for, for my purposes. I just want about a third of a cup, a third of a cup. And this is going to be put in a frying pan with a, a good tablespoon or so of butter. And I just want this heated up enough to make the onions a little soft so they're, you know, spent or something. It's the innuendo hour. Oinkathon. Oinkathon, as I like to call it, too. So once the onion... I just turned the heat on. Once the onion turns a little soft, once it gets a little translucent, I'm going to be adding... I'm going to make a very basic roux, R-O-U-X, and that's, that's like a thickening flour, butter. It's, traditionally, it's flour and some sort of fat or oil. And there's three types of roux, and it's used normally for as a thickening agent um, instead of just using cornstarch. So you have a, a light or a blonde roux, and then you can have like a medium one and then a dark roux. And the, the only difference is how long you cook it. Um, it changes the color of the, uh, the flour. And you get a uh, develop different flavors. Yeah, it's not particularly difficult to do. Um, you should be whisking this. I don't actually have a silicon whisk. I should put that on my wish list. Um, I know, I but I have a silicon uh, spatula. That's all I need. So in the meantime, I'm going to get my ingredients ready. Being one and a half tablespoons of flour. I didn't do it. Don't mind me just checking to see that gravity is still working. And uh, it is. It is. So we do, we do want to have equal parts of uh, butter to the flour. I'm using a tablespoon and a half of flour. So I want to make sure there is a full tablespoon and a half of butter. I think I'll just a touch short over there. So I'm going to tweak that up. I heard some giggling. That means someone was hilarious in the chat. Oh, with less swearing. Yeah. I'm not sure when it happened, but there was a time in my life where the only time that I swore was intentional and just for dramatic effect. And I think it had to do with my coworkers feeling very alienated from me not swearing because I was working with a bunch of tradespeople. No stereotypes. And I was uh, very, very much encouraged to, to swear up a storm. 
And I'm slowly breaking that habit. Yeah, Tourette's, right? Our old foreman, he swore all the time. That's not much of an exaggeration. And uh, it came up in conversation that it was, uh, in, in my opinion, my humble opinion, coming from the corporate world, not professional for office manager, for senior management, to be constantly swearing. I mean, I, I can appreciate a bit of profanity now and then, but this this fine fellow swore needlessly most of the time. He was He was pretty angry, though. And there were times where we had, like... Uh, there was a church looking for a major renovation and a Coptic priest shows up full regalia, head to toe, totally decked out like he's going to the goth club. He's got like the big medallion, he's got the huge cross, he's got the incense sprinklers, he's got the, the laser light show behind him, he's got the hat, he's got the beard, he's putting ZZ Top to shame. Senior manager, swearing up a storm, everyone in the building can hear it. And he was actually embarrassed. So he, uh, he asked me about it, and it's story time, by the way. He asked me about it, and uh, I said, yeah, it's kind of unprofessional. There's really no reason for it. And he claimed, his claim was that all tradesmen swear. And I thought, I think I heard my dad swear twice ever. He was a tradesman. And in the room was our, our drink technician. I never heard him swear ever, and I, I'd worked with him for on and off for 15 years. Like, he doesn't swear, and my daddy didn't swear, so it's not all tradesmen, it's, it's just you. <laughs> yeah. When I was growing up, uh, you could tell what part of town someone was from by the way they swore. It was, it was pretty funny, like... There was a like um, in the more Lugan rednecky kind of part of the city on, on the West End. Uh, I had a lot of friends out there. Almost every sentence would start off with an F bomb and end with man, and sometimes it was just fuck man. <laughs> every sentence. And it wasn't really so much a, a tick as it was just expected. And that's my one F bomb for the day. Don't worry. Okay, so we have the butter doing its thing. We have the onions translucening up. I'm getting ready to create my roux. So let's hopefully not bump any cables. So here we have an equal amount of flour, the butter that's frying up in the with the onions. We have uh, some salt, a bit of pepper. I'm going to whisk this in. In this case, it just stirred very quickly. And that's what this looks like. I'm going to keep stirring it until it clumps together. And to this, I'm going to add a few cups of milk. And since I rarely have real milk, I'm going to do something with a cream. Because uh, nobody's going to complain about extra rich, thick, creamy goodness in their scalloped potatoes. You want the root to keep moving. You do not want this to burn. But you want everything to come together. So right now it's still bubbling a bit. It's uh, it's basically done now. If I if I kept heating this, if I kept cooking it, the flour would start to turn a little darker. And I'll, I'll actually do that here. Ah, maybe I shouldn't. I'm sure I'm sure roux will come into play at some point later on. Okay, so I'm taking that off the heat just for a minute. I'm going to get, I need about, normally it's two and a half cups of milk, so I'm going to use about a cup and a half. 
cup and a quarter. Just going to make a thick ish sauce with the cream. And just a little bit of water to top this off. Because I used some uh, heavy whipping cream in there. Just want to catch up on the chat. Okay. Rude Girly, Arizona. Hey, hey. Okay. So I'm going to return this back to the heat. I'm going to whisk this up till it's a smooth sauce again. Because you can see that I still have this, the clumps of the roux in here. So if I had used a slightly deeper pan, like an actual saucepan, and not a small frying pan, and I had a silicone whisk, this would be a lot easier. But that's not a problem. Not a problem. So all we do from here uh, everything's uh, good I'm, while I'm waiting for this sauce to come back up to a boil I'm just going to start lining the bottom with uh, potatoes potatoes This is a very, very simple recipe. And other than being a little careful with your knife, uh, really can't screw this up. I mean, you, of course you can. You'd have to, you'd need some special talent to screw this up, I think. Run what you brung. Yeah. That's a, the hiking or camping version, right? No? So right now our sauce looks like this. There's still some clumps from the roux. Uh, it's going to get smoothed out. Once this comes to a gentle boil, I'm going to let it cook for about a minute. I'll, I'll turn the heat down. I'll let it uh, just simmer for uh, a minute. And then I'm going to pour in... Uh, Quick little splash on the potatoes, more potatoes, more sauce, potato sauce, just keep going. <clears throat> what are we making? We're doing it's potato palooza today. We're doing scalloped potatoes, we're doing a baked potato, we're doing Hasselback potatoes, we're doing pan fried potatoes, we're doing uh, potato pancakes. We're doing all the potatoes. I think the Hasselback potatoes are probably going to be the most uh, difficult technique used so far in any of my streams for the last year. Oh God, no. No, no, no. None of this is keto friendly. But, but, if anybody did follow my Friday keto stream, I finished my keto french fries. And they are on the good side of spectacular. So tomorrow, on my keto stream, I will be doing a keto burger, fries, and a milkshake. The total calories of that meal are going to be in the neighborhood of 12 to 1500. Yeah, not an exaggeration. Minimum 1200. And the total carbs are going to be in the neighborhood of, depending on the toppings, like 12 to 15 net grams of carbs. So if somebody out there is doing one meal a day, it's kind of perfect it's kind of perfect you'll actually be low on your macros and you can fill out the rest with some mct oil in your coffee or uh fat bomb maybe a salad with some dressing chunk of cheese chucky e. cheese yeah i'll show you what the sauce is looking like it's smoothed out a heck of a lot more it's not quite boiling yet but i don't believe i have any clumps the only little lumpy things that you see are the onion
So the scalloped potatoes, I'm going to cook them covered at first, and then for the last little bit, the last 15 minutes or so, I'm going to cook them uncovered, uh, just so that the tops crisp up a bit, so the tops brown. And then they need to sit for 10 to 15 minutes, and it's that last little bit of resting time that lets the sauce thicken up. Okay, so this sauce is bubbling away, doing its thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to assemble it on screen. Uh, to make it gluten-free, you could use you can use xanthan gum if you don't mind the flavor. Um, xanthan gum is the universal keto uh, thickening agent. Uh, if you're if you don't care about carbs, you can use a potato. Uh, you can use potato starch or a rice flour or a corn starch as a thickening agent. Any of those substitutions will work. Anybody ever has any? Oh, I brought up the carbs for. Um, uh, on Fridays, I do a keto only stream. And sometimes people get my different episodes uh, mixed up. And yes, if, if we cared about carbs, we wouldn't be having potatoes. That's right. And potatoes aren't, like nutrition-wise, they're not really bad for you. I mean, you have there's some vitamins in there. There's some uh, there's some fiber. There's some protein. If you're worried about calories, and it, like for anyone that's being health conscious, it's the calories that that is the real killer. It's, that's where people have the most challenge. And potatoes themselves aren't really bad calorically. It's just how you cook them. Because if you're gonna deep fry something, then Oh yeah, you can always throw cheese in these layers. We can we can do like an au gratin on the end of this. We can throw in some um, like mozzarella cheese or some uh, cheddar or a gruyere or something and then broil it at the end. Or we can top it with some uh, parmesan cheese or some breadcrumbs and do like a, an au gratin on the top. All of these substitutions, all of these things are very doable and... Uh, very crowd pleasing very crowd pleasing I mean you really can't go wrong with cheese on top of your fried starch and sugar let me get the rest of this sauce in here again if I did a full batch this would be a lot more evenly Distributed, but as it is, this is going to be fine. Let's spread this out a little bit. Papa Shock, welcome. You don't need to layer, build up the layers. I like to. Um, the important thing, though, is to grease the heck out of the bottom and the side of the, the casserole dish, just because the potatoes they're going to be cooking for a while. I don't want them to to burn and get stuck. So you can just build up layers of the potato and then just cover it in the sauce. Again, I, I like to put some sauce in the middle on the layers. We're at 350. Um, yeah, there's one other step in here. You can take some sh uh, frozen butter and shred it with your box shredder, which I will need at some point. 
Uh, so I can just take this and shred some frozen butter on top. Or I can just take some regular butter, like another tablespoon or so, and just put it around the top. Again, if you have the frozen shredded butter, you're going to get a more even distribution of shredded butter on top. This stuff is still, this stuff being the butter, is still going to melt. It's still going to get all over the place. Um, using the shredded frozen butter makes it a little more consistent along the top. I'm going to put another little dollop there and then we're good. Tons of excessive amounts of butter. How can you go wrong, right? I'm going to cover this, bake it for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to remove the top and cook it for about an hour. Boom, 30 minutes. Yes, so half an hour with the top on and then an hour with the top off. After it's cooked for about an hour and 15 minutes, you'll want to start poking at it with a fork. And if it seems like the potatoes are done, then they're done. But the whole thing should be cooking for at least an hour and 15. The difference in time will have to do with how consistent you were with the thickness of your potato slices and, uh, and the potatoes themselves. Because even from the same variety of potatoes, some are going to cook faster, some are going to cook slower. And it has to do with the fibrous structure and how much water is in there and what time of day it is and all sorts of reasons. There isn't a whole ton of variety from potato to potato as far as like the differences can add up especially with the thickness and the type of potato so it's always good to uh, just check your food before it's fully cooked and then take notes um, just jot it down somewhere in your book that you know it, stick to the same brand if you like if you like the, the end result and just make a note somewhere it took about this much time and then you know where to set your clock stop it five minutes early just in case you have a hot spot or cold spot on your stove because these things do happen. Uh, green beans with red wine sauce and garlic and green onions. Whew. That sounds good. Mm. Green beans. There's uh, The way it was cooked for me at home um, was usually just in a tomato sauce. And yeah, wine would be fantastic in there. And of course there was garlic and, and green onions all over the place. Snaggle whiskers, yeah, that sounds that sounds fantastic. Uh, garlic, lemon juice, parsley, pine nuts, and Parmesan cheese. How? Add anything other than green beans to that, and it's still going to be awesome. You don't even need the green beans to make that awesome. Seriously, like, other than it not making a dessert <laughs> you can you can mix those those items together and make anything taste fantastic i love it next we have damn near a cop out the baked potato the humble potato I'm going to give this potato a good scrub. I've got lots of time on this because this potato is going to be baking for about an hour. And the way to prep the potato for baking
I do. Um, in the I made this. That's where I encourage everyone to post pictures of uh, what they made, and feel free to pop your recipes in there as well. And if something is especially good, and I I make it at some point, I'll throw it on my website, and you can it'll be in the format of my recipe cards. And if you want to see what those look like, I think it's still on my clipboard. Boom. Yeah, just uh, take a quick peek, and you'll see the uh, the recipes in this really convenient recipe card format. We kind of like it. I kind of like it. I am a fan. So here's how. We have our potato. We have our fork. We want to stab this. Err. Between 8 and 12 times, 10 is a good number, 12 is a good number. And the reason we're stabbing at this is we want little holes for the steam to escape. Do not stab. Oh, I really need to stab it. Yeah, this, this is really good for aggression. I do not want to miss. So if you're at all concerned about stabbing yourself, wow. Well, it's hard to stab yourself with a fork, but it is possible. Er. I can do it. Some of these forks are tough to get all the way into the base of the tines. I mean, that's as far as you need to go, because if you think about it, I've got holes like inch and a half all the way into this potato. It's good. So as this cooks, the steam on the inside is going to come out, and I'm good. You cook it with nails. When you say you're cooking it with nails, you mean you prepare the potatoes and you have long, like, acrylic nails, or you cook it using finishing nails of some sort? Uh, it's a serious question. <clears throat> yeah, make, make sure you're, you're never stabbing your potato in anger. Make sure it's out of compassion, and it comes from a place of love. Oh, you, you literally said, okay, that kind of nails. Got it. Sure. Is the idea that you're going to get some heat transfer along the metal <laughs> into the, the middle of the potato? I have engineer friends that, that think like super literally like that. It, uh, I don't think it works. If your potato is that big, um, and depending on the temperature and the thermal conductivity of the metal of the, the nail... Um, maybe, maybe, I don't think it's necessary. One thing that gets asked fairly often though is, do you wrap these in foil? The places and the time where you would want to wrap this in foil is if you're out camping and you have your smoldering, yeah, you get some extra zinc, that's a good point. Uh, if you have your campfire smoldering and you just want to wrap up some potatoes and just throw them on the edge of your fire or wrap them in coals, the foil is going to protect the potatoes and that's fine. When you bake them with uh, the foil, the steam, the hot steam is going to be uh, kept around the potato so it's going to be baking and steaming at the same time. It will cook faster. The downside is if you don't eat it fresh, like while it's still hot, all of that steam, all of that water had nowhere to go. So your foil wrapping is probably going to start rusting. Probably. And especially when it's exposed to a lot of heat. And your potatoes are going to get soggy, which is gross. So if you get them fresh and you unwrap them, that's fine. If you're going to let them foil rusts, uh, yeah. <laughs> the old stuff does. Aluminum? Aluminum oxide. Where do you think it comes from? It comes from baked potatoes. So this potato is going to take... Well, it's not really large. This one, my guess, is around 45 to 50 minutes. I'm still going to cook it for an hour. Potatoes are really forgiving for the time to cook. If your foil is, uh, if it's treated with something, it's not going to rust particularly quickly, but you 
yeah like tomatoes tomatoes are very acidic and you shouldn't use your tomatoes you should avoid cooking tomatoes in your cast iron pan because it will eat through the the seasoning through that that oil finish mm -hmm. and it will start rusting out the pan um but most water most moisture um it's going to react with the foil especially with heat and it, it it will start to tarnish and it will eventually rust uh yeah cast iron pans mine are still in really pretty darn good shape and i keep bringing this up i am going to i am going to sometime in the next few months just record each step and then compile the video and then i'll just do a, a voiceover live at some point and it'll be like a 15 20 minute just snap cut between the, the seasonings and the baking and for anybody that doesn't know you take your cast iron pan and you scrape it down to the the bare iron and then you make darn sure that you've uh, cleaned off all of the rust you just scrub it down completely so there's no orange showing and then you get a really 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 thin layer of oil we can talk about the type of oil later and then you take that all around the the pan and you take that pan that's got a very very thin layer of oil and you put it in your oven that's preheated to the smoke point point. and if you're really slick you put the cast iron pan in cold and you slowly bring the temperature up to the smoke point of the oil and you let it bake at that temperature for an hour and then you let it cool down and then you put on another really thin layer and repeat and you do that a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time and a sixth time and you can keep going if you're really hardcore six, six seems to be good though um, you can get away with two or three but mine have a mirror finish and they're damn near non-stick damn near flaxseed oil all the way team flax the downside to being on team flaxseed is I got some in the fridge it oxidizes pretty quickly you should use it within a year of buying and opening it and it's got a really low smoke point which is really bizarre that it seems to make the best seasoning for cast iron but <laughs> what I did because its smoke point is something like 215 220 Fahrenheit I think that's where it is so it's a really really low smoke point what I did was every I think it was every third seasoning might have been every second one I have to check my notes after I let it cool down I brought it up to 450 just to see if it would smoke at all and it didn't so I think the reason why it works best is because it uh, it denatures better it polymerizes better and it's easier to control the process at that lower temperature the downside is it will get funky you have to keep using it you have to reseason it every a uh, little more often than using lard or uh, something with a higher smoke point from what I've read it does produce the better polymerization it makes the better seasoning it's the bigger pain in the ass take your pick like you said you use Crisco yeah not a doubt in the world that it worked out just fine but for me using the flax seed oil I had to yeah it was every second or every third time I had to bring it up to 450 and I let it bake for a couple of hours just to make 100% sure that there was no smoke and that it was properly seasoned and I had a perfect layer of plastic because that's what it is and then I uh, let it cool down and then I put on my third coat and cooked it let it cool down put on the fourth coat cooked it cool down and then probably went up to 450 again for a couple hours lather rinse repeat but when I'm done using my cast iron pans I just take a paper towel I scrub off or use my fingertips to scrape off whatever is on there if I really need I can run some water on it yeah, I know sh water and then I just scrape it off again with a paper towel and my just fingertips and then whatever moisture is left in the pan I return the pan to a, a hot stove top cooks off all the water and then I look at it and I see this beautiful shine that's perfectly clean Rycat, welcome and thanks for the sub Wow 550 holy crap 
oh yeah 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 snaggle whiskers that's that's the whole point like you take just the the dab of of the oil in your paper towel and you put the the, the thinnest layer you can you don't want big globs of, of the oil really thin layers top and bottom and then you just put that uh on your on your rack and then underneath you have a pan to catch any oil that drips down oh poor mariah cat and just think bribe the dj tomorrow Woo. There's even a picture of a smoking cat. <clears throat> yeah, Snaggle Whiskers, it sounds like you did it perfectly. It's It seems tedious, but I mean realistically, if you're binge watching Netflix and you have a loud alarm going for you to keep track of your timing, is it really that big of a deal? Kind of isn't. So we have about 15 minutes before this is going to go into Um, WFH so that's either work from home or I don't know what the cool kids are calling things anymore I'm, I'm sure there's some innuendo there <laughs> want a furry hunk I don't know oh yeah 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 that too that works I the furry is a little more safe for work, but that, that works. <laughs> so this potato is going to need some sort of a drip tray underneath uh, just to catch the steam that's going to leak out. Now, the other thing that this potato needs is to be coated in a bit of oil. And a shake a shake of some uh, salt. Sounds exhausting. Well, I don't know what you're doing for the other 56 minutes, but uh, okay. <laughs> Snap! I see what I did there. Totally flexing my prowess. <laughs> it's not a race. It's not a race. Sure it is. I win again. Woo! So I'm just <laughs> sprinkling some salt. Yeah. <laughs> He's so macho. <laughs> so shame on everyone. Uh, coated in oil. I sprinkled some salt on it. That's what's going to go in the oven. Uh, I just need to find a small pan to catch the little bits of oil that are probably going to drip off. Enamel bakeware is good. Uh, I am going to wait for the timing to sync up, though. In the meantime, next on the list is the Hasselback potatoes. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to these bad boys. I'm not going to start these until... The other potatoes are baking. This one is going to take um, about an hour to do. So I'm going to be cooking these at the same time as the other potatoes. Normally these are cooked at a slightly higher temperature. Uh, I'm just going to raise the temperature on what's in the oven right now. Don't tell anyone I did that. I'm telling. Shh. Nouveau's telling. Shame on her. So I don't know if, if anyone's familiar with Hasselback potatoes. The idea is we have a potato and then we cut, yes, I'm using the wrong end of the knife to demonstrate. We're going to cut uh, three quarters of the way down these thin little slits. And what's going to happen is when the potato cooks, it's going to fan out a little bit and then we're going to load it up with uh, stuff. You can use like seasoned breadcrumbs, uh, Parmesan cheese, um, any sort of herb spice mix. Uh, I don't have breadcrumbs, but I'm going to do the next best thing with some uh, grains. But salt, pepper, Parmesan cheese, a whole bunch of butter is going to get brushed in there. So it's going to be the best of uh, high temperature baked slash oven fried because of the butter. 
with whatever seasoning you want. Like you could go taco mix, you could go uh, more like a Greek style or Mediterranean with oregano, um, rosemary, thyme, garlic, onion. You could go Asian and throw some five spice in there. You can put some Frank Red Hot sauce. You can, sky's the limit. Like however you want to dress up your potato and do other things to it, I'm not going to judge. It's entirely up to you. So the Hasselbacks, uh, the, I will show you how to make it a lot safer and a lot easier to do. Because the one thing I don't encourage is a requirement for skill. The less skill involved, the safer, the better, the easier, the more likely you are going to are to do any of these things. I'm not familiar with alu matar paneer. What's the alu matar? <gasps> 10 minutes to go. Again, sorry about the... Okay. I, I hadn't heard that, uh, didn't remember that, recognize the name. The last time I went to an East Indian restaurant, uh, I, I really don't go at all that much. Um... I went with my insurance guy and he, also East Indian, um, doesn't like spicy food at all, but when I asked for some like goat vindaloo, nobody knew what I was talking about. Well they knew what goat was, but n neither the server nor Ricky had heard of vindaloo and I'm like, what am I missing here? What am I? That's totally what I was like, you know, like, some all like, valley girl, like. Neither the serving staff nor my uh, good acquaintance, buddy of mine, had heard of a vindaloo. I'm like, it's East Indian, right? <laughs> We're in the right place. What am I missing here? Yeah, I was, I was a little surprised. I was very surprised, actually, that they hadn't heard of vindaloo. I said, you know what, the hotter the better, bring me some goat, I'm good. Yeah, my last company, we built a number of East Indian, like Tandoor House kind of restaurants. I think we built three. And we had to repair uh, a traditional tandoor oven and we were sent the clay compound yeah. and it's entirely food safe and I don't know if people want me to describe the process or what goes into it or not having said that I still have zero problems going to any of those restaurants and eating yes okay so the traditional inner lining of the tandoori oven which hits something ridiculous like 1100 Fahrenheit. It's just crazy hot. It's made with poop. The, the, the mud clay mixture is made with uh, cow dung. So my... Yeah, snaggle whiskers, exactly. I, I think I Googled it too and they had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah, it's regional stuff. And of course it's gonna be regional and when we hear East Indian we think, you know, well India is just like one country so it's just like the cuisine in one state or something or one province. No, like the, the regional variances for all countries are crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And for, for me, it was a good reminder that there's regional uh, variants in, in cuisine ev everywhere. And India's not a particularly small country either. They've got a lot of different terrain, a lot of geography there, a lot of different biomes. Criano, welcome. So the Tandoor oven uh, is brought up to temperature of the, the inner... There's, there's, there's a crack in the oven, so the technician had to uh, fill in the crack with uh, the cow poop, 
and then fire it up and then let it cool down and then smooth everything out and put another layer of cow poop fire it up smooth it down fire it up again and it was good as new now when you heat anything to that kind of temperature it's going to lose all taste you're left with nothing but some sort of carbon right so it's obviously food safe it sounds disgusting but Tradition is tradition, and there's nothing wrong with it, and I have zero reservations about eating East Indian food or um, anything cooked in a tandoor oven. But yeah, it sounds kind of gross. <laughs> Not going to lie. This potato, well forked every 56 minutes. <laughs> it's going in the oven for about an hour, and this is going to be on the tray below it pick up any steam or oil or anything that falls off. And when I say going in the oven, I mean literally on the rack. The rack is, uh, my racks are clean. Um, potato, bareback on the rack. <laughs> Need to wash my hand and my mouth out. I will be right back. And then I will get to the Hasselback Hasselhoff potatoes. Booyah. The other thing I need to do is take the casserole out. Oh, that smells glorious. Butter is sizzling on the side. I'm going to leave this to cook for an hour uncovered when I say an hour I mean about 45 minutes because I raise the temperature a little bit to deal with the Hasselbacks we got all the time in the world Maybe even more. Clean ish workspace, good enough. I'm just going to give this a quick wipe. What I want to do is tape these chopsticks in place. And these are going to become the guide for my Hasselback potatoes. Because from the side view... The potato is sitting like, huh, touching the ground. Pretend this is a side view. I can only cut down to this part. I'm going to use these chopsticks as a guide, so I'm not going to cut all the way through. And then to be extra thorough, what I'm going to do is trim the bottom of the potato so I have a flat surface, extra safe, and it guarantees that I'm going to have a consistent depth across the whole base of the potato using the chopsticks as a guide. I don't really need to tape these together, but just to be safe, I will. 
I'm going to uh, go grab some tape. Isn't that clever? Sometimes I am smarter than the average bear. Yes, Hasselback potatoes. Are they worth the extra effort? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so these are hopefully not going anywhere. I guess I should peel these potatoes. Yeah. Do you want me to or no? Yeah, go for it. I'm not eating them. Whatever. It's up to you. You can do them either way. They're still going to separate. Um, I'm not going to peel these ones. That was especially hot. I'm going to do uh, three of these. We look for potatoes that are about the same size. I'm not getting mad about it. I'm just getting even. I'm just going to give these a good scrubby scrub. Serena, you're sweet. Thank you. Just giving these potatoes a really, really thorough scrubbing. Again, feel free to use your imagination and make it as pervy as possible. If you see something like this that's obviously a defect in the potato, feel free to cut it out. Uh-oh. That potato's a little green, speaking of defects. Uh, yeah, if your potatoes are green, throw them out. Don't eat them. Food poisoning is only hilarious when it happens to someone else. I mean, it's not hilarious ever. Okay, so these three potatoes are about the same size. What I am going to do though, this is a little tricky, I'm going to trim the bottom. Even that one's a little green. Hmm. I wonder if there's something wrong with these Tito's. Yeah, that one's okay. Yeah, I guess that one's good too. And that one's okay. Good. I don't know why I have so many potatoes that are greenish. 
Okay, so here we go. Super duper duper tough technique. Are we ready? Are we braced? Do we dare? Let's get this on screen. <sighs> Wish me luck. The uh, <laughs> pressure's on. Like this is this is some high stress iron chefing happening right here. Let me tell you, I'm uh, I'm ready to lose it. I'm like freaking out all over the place here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hustleback. Oh, come on. Someone's got to be impressed with that. So if you look from the side, you'll see that it's nice most spacing. nice spacing most of the way to the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you have the flat bottom like this, uh, I know there's a big butt joke in there somewhere. Anyways, when you have a flat bottom on the cutting board, it's super easy to do. Mariah Cat, this is so, so, so easy to do. Like other than the spacing, which is really easy to control when your potato is not moving and it's held in place by pieces of wood. Like if I wanted to be super thorough, I could set up some wood clamps here, but it's the next best thing, right? It's almost hard to screw this up. You should try it. Let's see if I can get lucky a second time. Hasn't been an hour yet, but I will try. And that definitely wasn't four minutes. <laughs> Uh, we're all getting demonetized and going to hell. And take your time when you're making these cuts because if you go too quickly, uh, the potato itself might be a little rigid and it might just snap on you even though you didn't cut all the way through. Just even pressure, stop when you get to the uh, chopsticks. It's kind of hard to go through the chopsticks. I know it's a gadget, but you know those potato or those egg slicers? Again. Ah, I screwed up a little bit there. That one's a little uneven. I'm a failure. Oh my god, throw it out. I, I should throw this out. Yeah, this is embarrassment. I'm going to edit this in a post-production. But you can see, you can see how... Uh, how clean this is on the bottom. We have a straight line on both sides for the depth. Last one, let's see if we can get lucky a third time. Again, still hasn't been an hour, bud. I think I'm a teenager. Uh, yeah. The first couple of incisions are a little, might be a little off because the curvature of the potato on this side uh, doesn't quite hit the bottom, so it's gonna there's gonna be a little bit of a, a boat shape, a boot, a boat shaped um, on the bottom of the cuts. If that doesn't make any sense or mean anything to you right now, it will once you do this. Doop a doop a doo. Again, even cuts, nice spacing, straight line on the bottom. This last one here, because the potato was uh, curving up, I, uh, I stopped before I got to the, the chopstick. I was cutting that. But I mean, this is, it's not hard to do. I'm going to put one more cut on the side here, just because. This might be a mistake, but here we are. Okay. Yeah, this one needs a little cut too, just because. So the next time you're out at a super duper fancy restaurant and somebody has some Hasselback potatoes, 
you should be thinking, I saw that Dupas Vlahos do this in his sleep. This is nothing to do that. It takes no skill at all. While this is happening, I'm going to melt some butter. Because nothing says potato like butter. Or maybe it does. A good healthy amount of butter is required for making good healthy potatoes. How's that? Woo! Unsalted. What kind of heathen uses unsalted butter? The recipe calls for salted butter, butter, so I'm going to add. like half a teaspoon. I need about a third of a cup, quarter cup. This much of a cup of butter. It's going to set that to medium low. We've got like 20 minutes before we can use this. It's going to salt up this butter because this is unsalted butter over here. So when we start the, we're just gonna brush the melted butter and then I'm just gonna put some salt and pepper on the potatoes and then uh, they're gonna bake for about 50 minutes every 20 minutes or so, so at 20 and 40 minutes. I'm gonna brush it again with some more butter and then after about 50 minutes, I'm gonna take my uh, breadcrumb and Parmesan cheese mixture and I'm going to cover the top of the potatoes, splash of uh, paprika, and uh, finish baking them. And then they'll look all pretty. <clears throat> Nothing says potato like hobbits. This is very true. Salted butter does have a longer shelf life. It does last a little longer, uh, like a couple of months longer. You can just add salt to regular butter. And there's a lot of good arguments uh, to doing that anyways, because you can control more precisely how much salt you have just for flavor. I'm not gonna touch the other uh, health benefits or pitfalls of salt. Um, okay, I will. Fat and salt have been demonized needlessly since the 50s. There have been a lot of studies that were uh, bogus. The methodology wasn't just kind of bad. The data itself was fudged. So there is some correlation between sodium and blood pressure. I don't know. I'm not sure if it's a positive or negative correlation. If you look at the Swiss studies, there's a negative correlation. But don't take your nutrition advice from this guy. <clears throat> As far as flavor goes, though, if you're going to be changing brands of butter regularly, just go with the unsalted and figure out if you like half a teaspoon per cup, three quarters of a teaspoon per cup, a whole teaspoon per cup, whatever you want. You can be a lot more consistent with your, your cooking that way. That, I think, is only going to really play a factor if you're doing uh, pastries and, and baking desserts. And speaking of herbing butter, I was reading more on the process and it's about four hours to infuse butter with herbs. 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 So I'm gonna have to do some of that off screen in advance and I think I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna wanna try it first because I've never done it. So I do happen to have some herbs left, which are very legal here. And I'm gonna try a batch, I think in the next week. So maybe, maybe two weeks from now. So I'm gonna have to order some. I will go over the, uh, the math and the proper proportions and I will start a batch uh, in, infusing the butter 
hours before the stream and then on the stream i'll show you how to prepare the herbs and uh decarboxylate them decarboxylate them there's some sort of carboxyl action that goes on and uh use that to infuse some butter and then i will using the power of internet snap cuts jump to something that's already been prepared a few hours earlier and then we're going to make some brownies and then after i try them i'm going to end the stream because with any luck i won't be able to continue streaming <laughs> probably shouldn't do that on screen i'll let dj nouveau do that Yay. Woo! so in case anybody missed the implications We're going to do the herbed chocolate brownies. And I'm probably doing it here. I, I want to double check with shock that it's cool. I know it's legal in California. It's legal all across Canada. It's legal in most of uh, the places where this is seen. Um, I reached out to the folks at uh, Twitch for community standards and guidelines. Because uh, I've, I've been suggesting, I've been hinting at doing this while well. I've been openly speaking about it. Uh, <laughs> dang it. Uh, I'm not anti-green culture. I'm not anti really anything. Except for maybe murder. I think I'm anti-murder. Yeah. Probably. Oh, yeah. Especially when it involves me. No, wait. Only when I'm the target. How's that? <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Um, prior to the summer, I hadn't touched the green stuff for about 33 years. That's not an exaggeration. Uh, I always enjoyed the smell of it. I always enjoyed the taste of it. Just didn't do anything for me. Uh, now that it's, it's been legal in Canada for years and legal all over the States, uh, I, I reached out to the Twitch community standards people and they came back and they said, when in doubt, don't. That was the TLDR. Um, they do have a standing policy of. Uh, you can't do anything that's illegal in any country and i'm pretty sure that what amaranth does is illegal in some countries so i figure just grinding up some herbs baking them for a while infusing that with butter without mentioning what it is i don't think anyone's going to care again it's legal in the vast majority of places that are going to watch this and maybe we'll have to put the uh mature content warning on it again i'm going to double check with shock if if he's not cool with it i'll do it on my stream but uh Shock, because I love you, you get first dibs on the green stuff. We have some butter that's melting. And even though I have all the time in the world, I will, Mariah Cat, I will, uh, I'll, I'll post the pictures on the Discord for sure. And uh, maybe DJ Nouveau will comment about how tasty or, or inedible they were. I'm, I'm hoping tasty. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm just going to throw together some random stuff for my mixture. So instead of a couple of tablespoons of seasoned breadcrumbs, I'm going to get the next best thing going. And a quarter cup is about six tablespoons, give or take. Oh. Four and a bit. I'm gonna use uh, like two and a half tablespoons of Parmesan cheese, and I'm just gonna make something funky here with some uh, almond flour and some herbs and a bit of uh, oat fiber. It, it's a it's a good substitute for uh, breadcrumbs. Again, I don't have any. Uh, you're welcome to use your own breadcrumbs. Don't run out and buy breadcrumbs. Just take some toast that you herbed with whatever herb you want. Just butter it up. Uh, smear some herbs on it like uh, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, 
your Italian or Greek spice mix, your Cajun spice mix, your taco spice mix, whatever spice mix you want. And then uh, let it dry and crumble it up. Oh, Papa Shock, there, there's no rush on the question. And I, I think I think he gave me an answer uh, a few weeks ago about it. I, I just want to double check uh, well in advance because uh, I do not like breaking the rules. I am a little bit of a stickler for the rules. What kind of cookies? What kind of cookies? Is that His Royal Highness or Her Royal Highness? Ginsterbush. What a great name. Ah, damn it. So twice a day the clocks just don't work? I see what I did there. That joke never gets old. The real irony is that my doctor, and I, I brought this up a few times, um, I have two medical, oh, well, that's that's convenient. <laughs> uh, good. Um, I have two medical doctors. Uh, one is a specialist in, in a cannabis product for medicinal reasons. And Therena, 24 minutes is all the... The rounding error for government work? I don't know. I'm going to call shenanigans on that one. Uh, so yeah, both of my doctors, they they very much insist that I up my, my various dosages and to be consuming the stuff regularly. So if I get a little more silly or sleepy on screen, that's why. Getting my silicone brush ready for uh, brushing this butter that's again it's just at a low temperature it's just warm enough to melt it's actually sizzling a little bit I should turn that down I've got my spice mix here so let's just pretend it's uh, spice breadcrumbs Kind of looks like it, yeah. I had to make a, what was it? Oh yeah, I needed some breadcrumbs for a hamburger recipe. Oh no, no, sorry, it was for my meatloaf. Uh, my meatloaf tribute to meatloaf. And it was a non-keto stream and I realized halfway through making the meatloaf I'm like wait a minute what am I missing oh yeah breadcrumbs crap so I decided last second to uh, just make the whole thing secretly keto Shh, don't tell anyone <laughs> no <clears throat> Do I, do I want to touch this one with a 20-foot pole? There was a time not too long ago where certain demographics, uh, I don't even want to go there, where certain demographics were really, really, really targeted for ridiculously lame possession and consumption charges. Uh, thankfully, we didn't have that up here, I don't think. But, um, yeah, there, there were a lot of people that were given prison time for having a couple of joints which seems absolutely ridiculous seems completely ridiculous and like not only do i think that weed should be decriminalized everywhere i think it should be legalized everywhere when it was legalized in canada my only concern was my biggest concern was there'd be a big culture shock and there would be a lot of people that didn't know how to handle it um much like in Europe, in a lot of places in Europe, people just grow up around alcohol. So when kids hit legal age here and they go out on drinking sprees, they don't know how to handle their liquor because they didn't grow up around it. They, they didn't have that like gentle experience, especially with adult supervision. 
So for me, I grew up around alcohol. It was never a big deal for me. By the time I was 16, I was, I was bored of going to the bars and I'd only been drunk a handful of times after turning 18. I think a lot of that has to do the, with the environment that I grew up in. And that's, and like booze was never a big deal. We had booze all the time. It was all over the place. And uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with getting your buzz on or getting completely wasted in the right environment. So having said that, because people hadn't grown up around weed, well, not enough people, I was concerned about a big culture or shock and a big like uh, influx of stupidity from people being stoned. And then I realized, what's the worst that someone's going to do when they're stoned? They're going to sit on their couch a little more. <laughs> right? So as it turns out, um, <laughs> not a whole lot happened. Oh, yeah, I, I hate hearing um, that it's, it's in comfort cops. Yeah. Yeah, that's really not cool. So as far as the legal thing goes, I'm uh, I'm personally of the opinion that it should be uh, legalized everywhere. And uh, when people get used to being around it, it's not going to be a big deal. And I personally don't buy the uh, the, the claim that it's um, a gateway drug any more than any other drug is but again that's just that's just me and i could be totally wrong i'm not like mr social scientist and it's not like i've studied this or anything just some random musings from some dude cooking potatoes on the internet whatever that means <laughs> A real Therina, that's hilarious. The question is, was the janitor selling the same stuff back to you or was the janitor just the dealer? <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Ironically enough, I what I've heard is that the black market for marijuana boomed for a while because the licensed dispensaries were charging so much and because it was legal and it became acceptable and more mainstream you didn't have to know a person that knew a person that could get you the hookup um, because it was fine to consume and have and do everything else and you didn't need any paperwork uh, there was a bit of a boom I'm not sure if it's still there but there was a temporary boom with the black market because it was uh destigmatized and you could still get it cheaper from your buddy of a buddy oh my god that's kind of hilarious and terrifying real therina wow that's where you need the, the scooby squad and the, and the mystery machine they could have cracked that case wide open Snoop Dogg would have gotten away with the tooth if it wasn't for you meddling kids and your doggo. What's happening now? What's happening right now is I have a few minutes left and then I'm going to butter these potatoes up. I just want to make sure that I have the timing down on everything here. The uh, potato starch is kind of funny. But white stuff is. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to have this casual little baking sheet. I'm going to just brush some butter on the top.
I think today is going to be one of the few rare streams on my live chef where I don't weave up bacon. Now, of course, if somebody asks, I probably will. Probably. Wow. Okay, and uh, this baking sheet should be greased, even though it's non-stick. There's going to be butter dripping on the bottoms, but want to make 100% sure that these things kind of fry on the bottom a little bit. I need a little bit of salt and pepper. And just a happy little sprinkle some salt, add a little bit more. Too much salt never wait a minute might have okay so we have close enough i'm just going to pop this in the oven after 20 minutes i'm going to uh, baste these again get a brush on the butter and then 20 minutes after that again about 10 minutes after that i'll be coating them with this mixture by then the potato should have separated a bit and then we're going to cook it till it's done. That's what the scalloped potatoes are currently looking like. So they're getting close to done. Again, at this point, I could, like, as soon as I know that the, the scalloped potatoes are mostly done, I can take any sort of a breading or cheese, especially like a Parmesan cheese, sprinkle it on top, and then a broil it, or take like a cheddar mozzarella, broil it, just to get that nice uh, brown cheese topping, or that nice crusty gratin topping. Yeah, so I'm a first generation uh, Canadian Greek. Um, I grew up around alcohol. It, was, it wasn't a big deal for me. My friends from Germany uh, grew up around booze. It was not a big deal. Um, my Asian friends growing up, yeah, booze wasn't really uh, cool for them. Well, it was when they were around me. Uh, I think in general, all my friends from Europe were uh, well versed and practiced in the art of chugging and drinking the various booze. <laughs> yeah, I, I fully expect that at some point, uh, maybe even within our lifetimes, that the majority of uh, like Western ish countries that have similar values and stuff are going to have much more similar laws when it comes to things like booze and drugs and other recreation. Yeah, hopefully. It just The idea of people having to cross state lines or cross into another country to go have a good time to go party instead of doing it in the safety and comfort of their backyard seems ridiculous to me. And Like that's like it seems ridiculous to me that people will go to those extents, to, to, to those lengths, just to go get their buzz on when it's safer and everyone knows it's safer and it's better and it's more productive in general to do in the safety of your backyard. But you get in trouble. It, it seems kind of ridiculous. Do, but, do, but, do, yeah.
Okay, so the last thing that we have. Oh my gosh, we have two things left. We have our pan fried potatoes and our potato pancakes. Quick, does anybody know how to pan fry potatoes? Put them in a pan and fry them? Put them in a pan and fry them, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to do one anyways. Oh darn. oh, darn. Yeah, like you're going to complain about this. I think I'm going to do, I don't know, like... That one's kind of green, I don't like it. Now I can't get Cypress Hill out of my brain. I'm going to scrub these potatoes. I'm actually going to, actually, I'm going to peel these potatoes. And then I'm going to do some fun things with them. Okay, so this potato we are going to peel. Let's see what this looks like underneath this green layer. I don't know what's wrong with these potatoes. Wow. The green part's the bad stuff. Uh, if this was just for me, if I was eating potatoes, I'd be okay with it, but. Okay, I will peel this past the green. I've done it many times. Just uh, very cautious when it comes to poisoning my better half. Well, be unaware, right? <laughs> I have so many witnesses now, my alibi is getting more and more irritated by the day. Yeah. Blouse would never do that. He's always talking about taking care of. DJ Nouveau and making sure he doesn't poison her. She got poisoned? Impossible. <laughs> Couldn't have been him. It was those rival streamers. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we have... Let's gonna make sure there's nothing off-colored here. Keep your potatoes in water so they don't discolor. Always has to do with the oxidite oxidation, oxidizing. The first thin cut, and now I have this flat surface on which I can cut things, always using the claw technique. Hashtag rest in peace, the Baron. cut these fairly thin. The thinner, the drier, the crispier, the fryer. I was supposed to sound a lot more slick, but uh, here we are. Before I fry these potatoes, I'm going to towel, I'm going to pat them dry with the towel. I'm going to bring my pan of okay. oil up to medium. There's a question. <clears throat> Solanine is not removed by boiling, but it can be destroyed by frying, which is what you're doing. 
Oh, Baron Von Raschke, the wrestler with the, who's famous for the claw. The claw. That, that's the whole story. All those extra steps. Ain't no one got time for that. If you are prepping potatoes for a small family of, I don't know, one to five or six, not exactly a small family, you don't really need to focus or uh, play around with any of the kitchen hacks or tricks or getting like a, a power drill with a toilet brush on the end of it, which does work. If you've ever seen a commercial potato peeler in action, uh, it'll all make a lot more sense. The only time, and I bring this up on the stream a fair bit. <clears throat> the only advantage, the biggest advantage to having good knife skills so you can cut things quickly is just to save a little bit of time. But if you're just doing vegetable prep for, again, one to six people, the time savings is basically irrelevant. If you're cooking for a small army of you know, 50 to 500, that's very different. Yeah, and there, there's some advantages to uh, to blanching your potatoes first, especially when you're frying them. Um, and if you have your own potato chipper so you can cut your own potatoes, uh, you still don't really need to peel them because the you go for that really nice rustic uh, home fries at a restaurant experience. And you can uh, boil them a bit and then let them sit in your water. And then when you fry them, they get extra crispy. An extra floofy. So again, I'm going to just trim a thin piece off the bottom. So it says that it can be bitter if it's dark green, green you should just throw them out. But if it's light green, you can trim off the green. Right. Thank you. So Mademoiselle Nouveau from the background was uh, saying that if the potatoes are dark green, throw them out. If they're light green, you can uh, cut them out and they'll be a little bitter. They're still good. I just don't want to risk poisoning her. She's got a sensitive tummy. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, uh, I am going to not get these potatoes started just yet. So these are hanging out in the water. I'm going to squeeze these dry. Yeah, I don't know if it's chlorophyll, but it is from being exposed to sunlight. Yeah. And I, I, solanine, is solanine is created from the sunlight. And uh, I did not know that until very, very recently. So you learn something new almost every day, if you're doing it right. Okay, I'm going to check this with a fork to see how tender it is. Unfortunately, I can't do it on here very easily. Uh, you know what, you guys are worth it. Let's see if I can do this without burning myself. That's what oven mitts are for. Okay. Fork goes all the way through. Oh yeah, these are done. Woo! It's perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> now. 
Now I don't want to risk doing this, but I feel that I have to. So if I lose the camera, start freaking out in the chat and I'll try to reset it. Here we go. I'm going to show you the frying pan cam. <laughs> Thank you, Snaggle Wizards. That was an excellent comment. I am going to just very quickly towel dry these potatoes. And what we need to do is lay these away from us. Because if the oil is going to splash, it's going to splash towards the back of the stove. If I drop them towards me, there's a chance I'm going to splash the oil towards me, which is not what I want. Now you'll see that these are bubbling up. And what I'm going to do here, which is super unconventional, are you ready? I'm going to cover them. Rihanna, uh, yeah, that would work. That would totally work. I like the way you think. It's good. It's really good. <clears throat> yeah, and you could put like peppercorns or little cloves in there and, I don't know, acupuncture needles out of something. Here we are with the potato. Let's see how cooked this one is. Oh! Fork goes all the way through. I think this potato is also done. Hot potato, hot potato. The nice thing about this potato is you can see where it got forked all over the place. Hashtag me too. Um, so it's nice and dark and crisp on the outside and it's a little tender to the touch. The fork went right through it so I know that it's cooked. So on medium heat, that oil, again, the cast iron pan is going to hold a bunch of uh, heat. The oil itself is going to hold a bunch of heat. I didn't put in a lot of volume of potatoes and they were not particularly cold. So I'm not going to be shocking the temperature of the oil too badly. The potatoes are going to be crisping up uh, on the bottom mostly. Once I start seeing the sides starting to turn a golden brown, again, after about six minutes, I'm going to flip them over, cook them for another few until they look golden brown, light brown, golden yellow, something around there. And then I'm going to put them back on a paper towel and let them set aside. And then I'm going to season them up uh, however I want. So to do it in a Greek style, which you know, is my default, um, I could just mix up a batch of like oregano, uh, some hard grated cheese. Parmesan works, but I think a lot would be better. Uh, just something really sharp, but something I can grate very fine. And then I can serve with some lemon on the side or squirt some lemon on top if I don't mind the potatoes being a little soggy. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. Okay, so these are starting to turn brown on the side. I'm going to check these, gently flip them over. That's not quite done, but it's getting there. And these things are thin enough to be turning into chips. 
like potato chip chips, not potato fries. The real question is so deep in his deep cuts, his prime cuts. Just in case I finish early, is he going to be ready? We got lots of time. Oh, oh, oh. So that was five and a bit minutes. Let's take another look. Oh yeah, it's been much more fry like. Gently turning these over. I do not want to splash boiling oil all over the place. I'm not repelling the invaders from the castle walls. Nobody needs to get doused in boiling oil or any variation of Greek fire. I see what I did there. Best shooter recipe ever. You know, there should be a Greek shooter called a Greek. There should be a shooter called the Greek Fire, and I don't think I've ever seen it. And that's a missed opportunity. And shame on all the bartenders in the world. Shame on every last one of them, or shame on me for not finding out. Yeah. What I'm going to do though is grab a plate and line it with paper towel. Two ply of paper towel and another couple of plies. Supplies! Wait. blog I have a write-up on the different oils like every one of their dogs seems to think that extra virgin olive oil is the shiznit I think that's what the cool kids still call it that it is hands down the single best oil on the planet everything should be fried in it we should bathe in it we should be mainlining it and so on they're mostly right they're mostly right except for when it comes to deep frying depending on the type of extra virgin olive oil the smoke point can be anywhere from 350 to 400. <clears throat> and just because an oil hits the smoke point doesn't mean that it's immediately bad. It's just not really good for you. What I have in here is just regular vegetable oil. There's some sediment because I've done a lot of frying over the last few days. Uh, we call that extra flavor. The, uh, the pizza pan was there to just be a cover. Um, it's actually to keep the, the steam in there to help the, the tops cook a little better, just, just for the first half. They're being cooked while covered. Also keeps the oil from uh, splattering all over the place. I do have a, a screen for that. <clears throat> Yeah, so it, uh, like 325 is a perfect temperature for extra virgin olive oil. That, that's fantastic. Um, the lower grades of olive oil, 
like the second, third, and fourth, whatever pressings, like the non-virgin pressings, the smoke point can go really high. So for most cooking, you get that cool burst of flavor right about the smoke point. But if the oil is at that temperature for too long or it smokes for too long, it tastes bitter and you start getting these um, free radicals forming, these uh, cancerous. cancerous bad things. So that's not what we want. Doesn't matter how cool it sounds, we, we don't want that. <clears throat> North of Fox, welcome. Oh yeah. I love the sound too. I get a lot of questions about ASMR from the stream like, should I just shut up and let the, the kitchen do the talking? No. <laughs> okay, and one thing that I do not want to forget is to get rid of this pan. We're getting dangerously close to uh, the time to brush some butter. You can see them starting to separate a little bit. Uh -huh. Put this down before I burn myself because that pan is really hot. You're really hot. Okay. is a good idea. Okay, so here are the Hasselbacks starting to separate, going back in for another 20 minutes before they get the second basting. to be flipped over. It's cooked a little faster than the previous batch. You have to have a word with my quality control people. Do HRH Ginster Bush, you have a you twitch? Because if you do, I need to follow you. You have a bunch of followers. You haven't streamed for eight months, what the heck? last batch of the fries and the oil is still at a nice temperature So 
Mademoiselle Nouveau streams music and uh, she indulges me and lets me do a set ish at the end of most of her streams and I got the real itch to uh, to do some music and I'm gonna be doing that like once a month on uh, on Tuesday evenings just because I have way too many friends that uh, stream every other night of the week <clears throat> what do I do with that used oil well that's a great question I'm going to let it come down to room temperature. I'm going to fill up this container and I'm going to let my recycling people dispose of it. <clears throat> our, I don't want to say that our recycling system is good. It's it's surprisingly not bad. I think that's the fair way to put it. We're not supposed to dump, especially in, a, like in apartments or, or condos, you're not supposed to dump grease down your sink unless you have a grease trap, which basically nobody outside of a restaurant does because it's terrible for the, the system. It clogs up the pipes. Uh, if you've ever seen what happens to grease when it gets uh, down to cold pipes it congeals right away and then builds a layer and it's really hard to get through there and all sorts of hilarity ensues so so what I like to do is just have a container once the oil comes down to room temperature I just pour it into that container and then I'll set it aside uh, for the uh, garbage removal people so any biomatter so lawn clippings uh, tree branches uh, enemies um, the city will take away for free and it goes to the dump and the uh, it goes into a compost section if you have a mandolin for cutting your fries even better you if your food processor has a setting to do straight cuts you can of course use your food processor to do this or if you're using a knife uh, just try to be consistent like I could use this box cutter with a, with a similar amount of pressure and uh, get my potato wedges in here or the, the sliced potatoes from here so knife's good enough <clears throat> no you, you don't have to boil potatoes before frying them there's there's some advantages uh, especially if you're mass producing them and you want to have potatoes ready to go at the drop of a hat then it's good to have a, a parboil them or blanch them so they're ready to go they fry faster and they are a little less starchy so they they cook uh, just a bit better But you know what? Since rel bells, anytime, anytime. If there's if there's a question, doesn't matter how stupid somebody might think it is, please ask. Not, I'm, I'm, I can't be more serious about that because if somebody's curious about something, good chance somebody else is as well. And most people aren't professional kitchen folks. We're here to maybe learn how and have a good time. So if I can share some information. I'm happy to do so and if I don't know the answer I will tell you I don't know I'll tell you what I think it is and I could be very wrong and then I'll ask someone to quickly hop on and ask chef Google what the, uh, the situation is okay these fries are gonna be really close to done again a slotted spoon I'm just putting these on paper towel lined plate just to soak up some of the oil and these things are crispy if I press down on the paper towel I know I will uh, break the fries and here's a bonus treat for everyone that followed my uh, Friday stream straight from the freezer french fries are you ready? Are you ready?
if anyone doesn't know, these are keto fries. There's no potato in them. I actually needed a little bit more oil in here, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, real farina, it's... It is a little risky using a bandolin. Um, I prefer the like the like the little star frit ones where you have that guide track where you just put your thing underneath the the shuttle that goes back and forth so you can't cut yourself. The ones where you hold the object without that top uh, piece of plastic to hold your thing in place. That guide is is very good and it's, it's it keeps your hands and fingers safe if you're just doing things manually in the style of like this box. It's easy to cut yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I, I know, I've, I've had traditional fish and chips. Uh, there's, there really is no comparison. You're absolutely right. Now somebody might be asking, what the heck are these things that have puffed up and are frying so darn beautifully? Well, dear viewers. It's a proprietary mix of almond flour, coconut flour, are you curious yet? Xanthan gum, a bit of salt, and the secret ingredient, hot water. That's it. Yeah, that's how I cut everything. I, I just use the cloth, like the, the bent grip, I guess you call it. And I just run the knife along the curvature of my fingers so the blade the blade doesn't get to my fingers. It runs along the, the side. Woo! Ah, it popped open. I actually want to show you this. Um, yeah. Took it out just a second too late, but it's kind of funny how they pop like this because you can see how fluffy it is on the inside. Kind of neat. Now, this is with no exaggeration, no word of a lie. If I served these keto fries to somebody that was reasonably drunk, they would not know that they weren't made out of potatoes. Reasonably drunk. And I, I say that with, with complete confidence. So, I, I, I don't know. It's... Tomorrow I'm doing a keto burger, fries, and milkshake with a real hamburger bun and with real fry, well, fake fries, and something that I think is going to be really close to a uh, milkshake. If you use the claw technique, if you make sure that the, the surface that you're cutting on, like your your object is flat like this, and it's not going to roll around on the cutting board, you won't cut yourself. So unless you're rushing, there's, there's really no reason to ever cut yourself when you're prepping vegetables. And that's why all, all the, the culinary arts schools, they, they just drill that into people constantly. Use the claw, use the claw, use the claw. If you have any workplace injury claims, if you have too many, you will get fired from your job. As unfair as that sounds, it, it's true. Because the insurance gets kind of crazy up here. <laughs> Kriana, that's awesome. So here are the fries. Is that ASMR worthy or what? And, and don't get me wrong, like I, I know 
I know that accidents are going to happen. For me, part part of the, the education that I'm trying to share is to minimize you hurting yourself in the kitchen so you enjoy your time in the kitchen so you cook more. That kind of feeds itself. Uh, speaking of feeding yourself, I am going to... Load this up with another round of. Uh, can you see that on screen? Yeah, it's separating nicely. Yeah, real Therina. You saw what I did there. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. It's starting to look pretty sweet. Yeah. Yes, it's just butter. It is just butter. And I probably should have used a slightly bigger pan than the bottom of my old cheesecake springform pan, but good enough. I am going to, however, get... I'm just going to put this little pan underneath this dish just in case anything drips. Yeah, real Therina, it's just butter. It's literally just this stuff. Um, it was butter with a pinch of salt because it was unsalted butter. That's all I had handy. Just brush it on and, uh, and away we go. Kriana, you're you're doing it now. That's sweet. Can you please post your creation on my Discord? I would I would love that. Absolutely, absolutely love that. Uh, I don't know if I have my Discord link handy. I'm just gonna go dig that up. Here's the links for here's the link for today's recipes. Again, it's potatoes. It's not rocket science. And the only thing remotely interesting was using these chopsticks that I taped together to act as a guide for cutting into those potatoes. So there was um, a uniform depth on the on the cuts. And this removes the necessity of really any skill. So just having some chopsticks taped together, is a great replacement for skill. Is it a kitchen gadget? Ah, shut up. <laughs> Nor normally, I the, the mantra around here is uh, simple ingredients or like a, real ingredients, um, no fancy technique, no gadgets. Something something along those lines. Um, those chopsticks I'll, I'll keep around. Um, potatoes are potatoes. I didn't do anything fancy with my knife. Uh, just keeping an eye on the oil and uh, and cooking it safely, cooking things safely and cutting things safely, that's about as complex as it got today. So having said that, I'm going to hydrate and get to the last recipe, which is potato pancakes. So proper DIY, absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> and if somebody has another way or a suggestion for a way that's better or uh, more efficient, please, by all means, throw it in the chat. I, I do not claim to know everything and I'm always happy to learn. I'm always happy for somebody to show me where I'm misinformed or just flat out wrong. Because if I have an opportunity to, to be corrected, that's an opportunity for me to grow and I, and I genuinely appreciate that. Just don't be a dick about it, that's all I ask. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> well, I still need my dough by hand. I, I don't. I don't have a stand mixer. Um, I don't have the room for one, and uh, I don't want to spend five thousand dollars on a good Hobart twenty quart stand mixer. Because <laughs> that's the world that I come from, and I mean, I, I guess I could get by with like a Cuisinart with all the the gizmos and attachments. I just don't have the room for it. Um, my cooking area is two feet by two feet. Like my cooking area over here, two feet by two feet. I have my stove, I have my sink, and I have to use my dining room table for temporary storage while I'm cooking things. I have a very, very small kitchen. And that's not a complaint, that's if I can do what I do in my kitchen with no gadgets, no fancy techniques and so on, there's no reason why you can't. Okay, so we are going to give this another... I think about seven minutes, and then I'm going to, uh, like two-thirds of a meter, give or take, like uh, 60 centimeters, about. Sixty-three. No. Yeah. No. That's yeah, about 51 centimeters. Is that it? No, it's got to be more than that. Yeah, 61 sounds right. Yeah, it sounds right. <clears throat> oh, the grinder. Yeah, planetary stirrer is great. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, it's when you have the, um, like there's a, the or planetary gearbox on the inside of the, uh, the, the, the big stand mixers. And then you have this, hook that's a offset and you can it's fantastic for kneading dough and it's hideously expensive to repair yeah it is kind of a kitchenette yeah planetary is fantastic if you get it properly made and so on yeah apartment living is not ideal i've actually taken a few little video clips of the kitchen um, where the cameras are and where my computer is and what my computer is same with my painting area same with the DJ area um, <laughs> It's kind of funny, so I, I will be putting it all together for the introduction for uh, for my channel at some point So without further ado I need to Get these things Okay, I think this is ready to be brushed up. I'm going to just dump off some of this oil before I burn myself on it. Okay. So we have our Hasselbacks. You can see this hopefully on screen. Okay, so we have one last brushing coming up. We're getting all the butter in here. And I can already feel that the potatoes are, are getting soft. So from here, I'm going to completely douse these with butter. I want to get, make sure there's butter in between each of these slices. And then I'm going to sprinkle the cheese and crumb, crumb mixture. Real Therina, the powder was supposed to be seasoned breadcrumbs. Uh, I had to do a last second change and I did something with some almond flour and some oat fiber and some salt and pepper. It's a really, really good approximation for 
spiced breadcrumbs or breadcrumbs in general. Today's not supposed to be keto, obviously, because I'm doing potatoes. But uh, if I can fake my way through a couple of substitutions for food that I'm just not going to eat for ever, I, I try to do that. But you can just use any any breadcrumb. So here we have the breadcrumb and cheese on top. This is going to go in the oven for another 20 minutes, and then it's going to be nice and crispy and golden, a lot more separated, and these things are going to be fantastic. Okay. I'm going to put 15 minutes on the clock. Yeah, it's not a keto stealth potato. <laughs> like, there's no such thing as. <clears throat> would these bad boys work? Yeah, these would work. Um, pork rinds. The only thing that's tricky about pork rinds is when you get uh, moisture, they turn soggy. And they kind of crackle like Rice Krispies. Um, if the potatoes are fairly dry, when you put the... If you use the, the pork rinds ground up as a breadcrumb substitute, just make sure that you're not putting it on something that's super wet, and then it'll, it'll be fine. And I'm super jealous of anyone that has access to flavored pork rinds because we very, very, very rarely get them up here. <clears throat> Neat. <clears throat> yeah, speaking of experimenting, my my juicer attachment, the last one that needed replacing, arrived. So speaking of the herbs. I'm going to be grinding up some pistachios and make some pistachio flour. And I will be using that to make my salted pistachio ice cream. Which just so happens to be keto. <gasps> they made their own pork rinds. Oh my god. I was looking into doing my own pork rinds because I wanted a substitute for rice krispies to do a keto rice krispie square and the idea was vanilla cured pork rinds in lieu of the rice and then i was going to use allulose to make the marshmallow and the next thing you know you got this like literally zero carb rice krispie square and people would lose their minds over it unfortunately any moisture at all which would come from the marshmallow as well um kind of deflates and turns the pork a little chewy and a little gross and the only good recipes that i've seen that i've heard of i haven't done them myself involve specific protein powder blends and to me that's just in, too much in the realm of obscure ingredients like i don't have a problem ordering vital wheat gluten or oat fiber or you know big bags of psyllium husk powder or xanthan gum or anything like that because you can order those on amazon but so the specific protein powders you can't always get online <clears throat> north of fox yeah it, uh, it does sound incredible what i did do though was a very 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 close to zero carb strawberry twinkie scouts honor uh it's way too hard to make for me to to demonstrate it's not a recipe that i can really share uh, just because it involves with I don't know if you've seen uh, with egg whites, when you cook them perfectly, they get that glossy shine, but they're still flexible. That's what's required. So it's actually an egg-based Twinkie that doesn't taste eggy at all around uh, strawberry cream cheese filling. And it was whipped up, and it really, really, really tasted like a strawberry Twinkie. Yeah, the, the gluten-free restriction is uh, is tough for some people. Um, conveniently for me, being keto, uh, other than the bread that I sometimes make, uh, I don't use gluten in anything. But yeah, I, I love tinkering around with um, with different ingredients. 
it just for me i need to draw the line between is this accessible to anyone else or am i just being weird for the sake of being weird and i'm okay with that it's just i'm not going to do those things on the stream all that often i've got to make some potato pancakes okay we have a box cutter <laughs> one of these bad boys i'm not going to move the camera back just because i'm terrified of every time i move this camera it sometimes crashes and before i forget i'm just going to very quickly get my discord If anybody wants to follow me, feel free to follow me on the Twitch and and the Discord. Oh, you get pre uh, pre mixed things. Yeah, I, I've I've heard of um, I've heard mixed things about Carb Quick. There's a local gluten free baker. Uh, who's pretty darn famous in the area for his alternative mixtures and he has a really really fantastic uh, gluten-free pancake mix and bread mix and um, the stuff he sells is top quality and uh, I don't care what it costs it's uh it's really good stuff it's really good stuff one of my old friends from university was uh, has celiac disease and he uh, he's really sensitive to gluten. It's not just a minor intolerance. Like he breaks out all over and he feels like he has to rip his skin off for weeks just being around um, if he consumes any flour at all, any gluten at all. So it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty serious when it comes to him and the glutens. A little unfortunately, since he and his wife have been uh, blessed with a couple of kidlets, I have not seen him for way too long, plus the COVIDs, and he lives literally a two-minute drive away, but he, uh, he left here in uh, damn near tears a few times after having a home-cooked meal with gluten-free baking. Because he doesn't know how to cook at all. Neither does his wife. Yeah, I would not. It's it's almost a first world problem, but I feel really badly for people that have um, food sensitivities, food allergies, and then like the big life-changing things where it's not like... Some people that are lactose intolerant where they just get a bit gassy or they, they can take some pills before they dig into the ice cream. There's not, I don't think there's anything you can do preemptively to deal with gluten if you have celiacs. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oof. I would not want to deal with that. And I, I genuinely feel badly for people that have to put up with that. I mean, there's worse things to have, but... Let's stick to our first world problems, shall we? Can't have pizza <laughs> versus I have the opportunity to have pizza, right? I'm going to very quickly peel uh, four potatoes. I'm going to shred them in the box. And then I'm going to very quickly get some uh, potato pancakes going. I'm a little surprised I have not set off the smoke detector. Shh. That was your cue. I'm just going to turn this fan on. Uh, 
guess one more potato. No, I mean potato pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> please, please describe what that is. It, it's probably the same recipe. It's it's common in, uh, in a lot of countries. For me, it's just shredded potatoes with some flour, salt, pepper. Some recipes use uh, baking powder, eggs, and then you just pan fry it. They stick together with eggs. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. You can, there's a lot of varieties for potato pancakes. You can, you can use boiled potatoes and uh, shred them up. You can use them where you can use raw potatoes. Um, you can pre-season these with things like dill. Which is always a crowd pleaser. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got a bowl, got my box shredder, got my potato. I'm gonna try to not cut myself. Okay, uh you can you can do potato pancakes with just potatoes if you're careful with the thickness of the potatoes and with uh, pressing down while you're frying them. Well, most things I do sound pretty awful to someone. When you're using one of these box graters, don't be a hero. Don't push all the way so you're cutting your hands. Like, when you're getting to about that thickness, just change the position. If you have to throw it a piece, throw it out. Don't cut yourself. It's just, it's just not worth the risk. And I, I hate... To see people hurt themselves needlessly oh, in, at all. Well, it's not the band aids that are so expensive. It, it's a pain in the butt. It, it ruins your things for the last or for the next couple of days. But more importantly, if I get blood all over my potatoes, I'm probably throwing them out. So all the work that I put in um, is wasted, and I'm wasting ingredients. All for what? To save like. Two cents worth of potato? Screw that. So this little piece, away we go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, kitty cat. That's uh, that's another. That's a really good. That's a really good use for them. Yeah, like any any sort of boiled or pre-mashed potatoes. Those make really good potato pancakes, and you don't have to do a whole lot of work. And they, the recipe kind of writes itself. You know, it's fried mashed potatoes. Like, how can you go wrong with? It's like twice baked, but pan fried potatoes. Like, come on. How's that not perfect food? And then you can just like drown them in cheese and bacon bits and sour cream and some chives and oh, right? So I'm almost done shredding these. Again, if you have a food processor, use it. Um, Oh yeah, fish cakes too. Heck yeah. So I have this. What I'm going to do with this mash, which you can see is very wet, is I'm going to wring it. I'm going to squeeze all the moisture I can out of it. And then I'm going to dry it even more with some paper towel. 
so I'm literally squeezing all the potato juice I can out of it. And I've squeezed out, I want to say about a third of a cup. Yeah, about a third of a cup of liquid out of these four potatoes. I really should be approaching Bounty for a sponsorship. So even after I squeezed out as much as I could, that's two layers of paper towel and it's still picking up liquid. Okay, dear viewers, moment of truth. The sides, nicely separated. That is super hot. Yeah, it's pretty. It's really pretty. So if I had breadcrumbs, something that was a little more crumbly with the cheese, it would have... Uh, spread out a little better instead of looking more au gratin like this but that's fine too and you can see the separations and there's just a ton of butter in there this, this thing's just soaking in butter not bad not bad did you fork them? oh did i fork it yet no I'll, uh, I'll fork it though sorry i had several bad experiences with my mom making them and them being raw okay i will fork this just to make sure that Mademoiselle Nouveau doesn't die on me. Uh. A super tender. <laughs> okay. Now that we have extracted as much liquid as we can out of this Sudeep, I'm going to be ready in uh, not too much. Oven back onto medium. I need an egg. Well, North of Fox, you're always welcome to come up and hang out. Don't do this at home. Because if it doesn't work, you look like a bit of a jackass. By the time I would ham up scooping out this piece of shell that legit fell in. But I, uh, I rambled just a little too much. Just a little. I don't want to be late for Sadeep's show. Uh, okay, so we have one egg lightly whisked. Need a quarter cup of all purpose flour. teaspoon of salt so half a teaspoon some finely diced onion that was optional because this is going to Mademoiselle Nouveau and she's not the world's biggest fan of onion I'm just gonna put just a tiny amount in here Okay, so really basic. We have egg, flour, a bit of salt, a bit of onion. We have our oil that's heating up over here. We're going to mix all of this together with a potato. And the idea here is we're going to just be able to spoon clumps of the potato batter into the oil 
Yeah. And uh, fry them for a few minutes until they come out like uh, potato pancakes. Just gonna go ahead and get my hand dirty in here. There's still a bunch of moisture in the potatoes. So it doesn't matter that the batter that I that I mixed up with the flour seemed very dry, a little clumpy. It's gonna mix up nicely with the potatoes. Just gonna have to, you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. Hopefully you saw some of this on screen. Just want to make sure there aren't any obvious clumps of the flour and egg in here. Make sure the potatoes are nicely covered. Some recipes call for uh, baking powder. I don't think it's necessary. The baking powder will change the acidity. It will make the mixture more alkaline, so it should help crisp up the potatoes more. I don't think it's don't think it's necessary. Ooh, what? Oh, well, apparently that picture looks really cool, Triana, and unfortunately I can't see it right now. Dang. Dang. But thanks for uploading it. Okay, so what I put in here was I have a few cups of shredded potato. I used a box, box grater for potatoes. I squeezed all the liquid I could out of the potatoes. I pressed some paper towel down on it to get most of the moisture out. <clears throat> then I mixed up an egg, half a cup of flour. The recipe's on the blog, but it's uh, just flour, salt, probably should have put in some pepper. We can do that later. Egg, yeah, that's it. Um, gets mixed into here. I'm just gonna take my big old big old dollop apparently somebody's hungry the egg is going to help keep this together yeah and kitty cat thank you and again did I do anything that was remotely difficult? <laughs> like, I, I know I sound like a bit of a broken record, but all of this stuff is, it's easy to do. And like, I, I pick my recipes because they're easy to do. And even my, my ice cream recipe, when cream was dirt cheap, I, I made a point of experimenting like mad to perfect, and I think I kind of did, uh, to perfect homemade ice cream without any gadgets. So my ice cream I make with a hand mixer and my freezer, and that's about it. The secret ingredient is vodka and heavy whipping cream. But I'd put my ice cream up against any commercial ice cream any day of the week. And it lets me do all sorts of crazy things, like my maple bourbon ice cream with crumbled bacon bits on top. Sounds phenomenal. It is. Salted pistachio ice cream. Sounds phenomenal. It is. Can anyone do it? Hell yeah. It's not hard. It really isn't. Yeah, Ginster Bush, you um, you've got a lot of really, really cool stuff, and I absolutely need to follow your blog. Can you send me a whisper, and um, let me know where I can find all of your stuff, please? <laughs> I'd, I'd really appreciate that. So deep, as soon as I'm done flipping these over, uh, I'm gonna pass the buck your way. So I need like two or three minutes. Is that just about ready? Ah, needs a little more time. Ah, close enough. So again, slotted spoon is your friend when you're dealing with fried items. Yeah, 
Metal. You can press these out to make them a little more flat. Uh, they're going to want to spread out a bit on their own anyways. If you press them out, uh, if you try to press them out flat right when you drop them in, there's a chance they'll get too thin and break apart. But once once you uh, you experiment with your batter a bit, you'll have a good idea of, of um, how thin you can make things and how uh, how firm you can press things down to to shape them. Okay, uh, so we have scalloped potatoes. They've been sitting for more than 10 minutes, but that sauce is completely set, 100% set. I'm going to grab a fork and uh, a little plate and show you. So there's the side. And you can still see it's nice and creamy. It's perfect. It's perfect. If anybody ever, ever, ever has any requests for a recipe or my take on something or an easier way to do something or a keto way of doing something or if you're looking for a, a demonstration of a specific technique as long as it's not super obscure um, or a specific region's cuisine let me know I'm always up for the challenge you do not want to serve these raw these definitely need to be cooked through. Yeah, yeah you, well, you want them crunchy, but uh, crunchy because they're crispy, not crunchy because they're, you know, raw. <laughs> and after today, I'm going to definitely be letting that oil cool down and throw it out. Yeah, Ginster Bush, I, I was totally in the same boat. I, I know exactly what you mean. I had hundreds and hundreds of like scrap notes lying around and I eventually typed them up into various notepad files and those were misplaced all over various computers and um, yeah I, I eventually just broke down and got the the plug-in for my recipe cards on my WordPress for, for my blog so at least my recipes as as I do them on stream I spend a few minutes and uh, just type them up and then I have a permanent record in a nice format so I'm glad I did the, oh, yeah, I'm sure you had some fantastic potatoes growing up in Idaho, or Ohio, sorry. Too much, uh, too much counter reads on the mind. Okay, so these bad boys are done. Just going to give them one more minute over here. Sudeep, are you ready to go? Yeah, the potato pancakes should have looked like this before I flipped them. I was uh, in a bit of a rush because I'm running a few minutes late. Okay, here's the uh, the thank yous as I'm waiting for Sudeep to confirm that he's ready to go. Much thanks to everyone for the uh, for being part of this. Thank you, Shock, for putting everything together. Uh, Loki Doom, Wicked Awesome, me deal with it. So deep, I know your prime cuts are going to be great. Shock, I, I guess you're entertaining. <laughs> oh, real Therina, thanks for the biddies. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really happy and uh, I'm thankful that, I, that I've been uh, asked to be part of this, this team, this, this project, and I know that Shock has a lot of really cool plans. To, uh, to expand this and um, I, I think he's going to make this into something really special and I'm really happy to be to be part of this. 
So if there's any feedback that you guys have for me, guys, gals, and pals, uh, if you have any feedback or suggestions or requests, just let me know. Please let me know.